Yeah, welcome back from my side as well. Um, first of all, I need to apologize for not being Maria, and I will not talk about um, games and duvets and um, tea. I will talk about platforms. And to David, who said, well, actually, it's not a good idea to have the picture of the um, uh, taken uh, the day after for, for, for this kind of presentations. Um, there's a reason why Alex and I choose to have an avatar rather than the real pictures. Um, but that's a completely different story. So, um, I need to go here, right? Yes. So, the fourth industrial revolution, um, what is it actually? It is... Um, it is the evolution, the evolution of digital platforms. So digital platforms are very vital um, for this fourth industrial um, revolution. And there is a path, actually, um, of how these um, digital platforms are evolving. So if you look into um, Gartner, uh, what they are actually putting out as um, the strategic trends for the next year, there are actually six that I think are very, very um, relevant for the evolution of digital platforms. So we have hyper-automation. And what they, are, what they mean with, how to, uh, with hyper-automation is actually um, the, is automation enabled by AI on the one hand side and uh, robotic process automation on the other. So putting these two things together can hyper-automate a lot of things which is a very, very important because platforms need automation. It's the empowered edge. The empowered edge is actually coming from um, IoT kind of thinking, um, but it's very important because it's, 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 it's really about not having a, a, a central unit where you have your computing power. It's actually having a distributed system, and this distributed system needs to be very flexible, elastic, um, and scalable. So this is also a trend for the next year, which is very, very important for, um, for digital platforms. Then we have multi-experience, um, which is we have all these channels. And um, the reason why Amazon is, uh, is buying Whole, um, uh, um, Whole Foods, uh, Whole Foods um, um, supermarket is actually they want to, we, they want to establish a, a, a new uh, channel, which is actually offline, um, but I think they have a, a pretty good strategy actually to, to, to integrate it into their digital channels. Yeah. Uh, we have democratization, which is very, very important. Um, the interesting thing here is this is about open source, of course, um, but it's, it, it's also about um, the availability of, um, for example, computing power, um, communication to everyone. If I want to create a startup today, it's very simple. In, 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 in looking back 20 years, I want to create a startup. I need to have um, servers. I need to have communication. Um, la 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 la. So it's 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 um, it's, it's literally un unaffordable. Today, I can start on Amazon Web Services on Google Cloud with something that cost me 100 pounds a month or so. Yeah. But it's also, and I will come to this later, um, a very, very important point of, um, of um, or a very, very important enabler of um, artificial intelligence, actually data. Because nowadays, artificial intelligence is driven by data. So, um, for example, the availability of trained models is part of this uh, democratization thing. Yeah. Then we have practical blockchain. I mean, blockchain is the, the most awful buzzword um, on earth, I think. And um, there are studies, actually, that most of the um, solutions that claim to be based on blockchains actually aren't. Um, but the practical blo blockchain is, a, is, is, is really an enabler when it comes to um, distributed platforms because it provides distributed trust. And then last but not least, of course, AI security, um, so basically p create an, an, a secure wrapper around AI um, is very, imp very, very important. And it's also very, impo very, very important um, from, the, um, from a trust perspective. So this is what Gartner thinks is, is strategic for, for, for next year. Um, and this will really, really push the evolution of digital platforms as well. So, where, what is the actual starting point? Um, 
I don't, think, I, I don't think I need to explain this one. This is basically how, how traditional business uh, works, which is a linear value creation chain. So you have a producer and you might have uh, intermediates in the middle and at the end there's a consumer who's actually consuming something. And in the in best case, every part of the chain is actually adding additional value to the, to the, to the end product that is consumed. Um, and then the money flows the way back uh, and every participant um, of this chain is actually taking money off and then there's some money left for the, for the original producer. So this is, this is how, how traditional business works. Um, many businesses are, 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 are very um, successful with this, um, but surely this is not a, um, a model that will produce exponential growth. So, if we, because if we if we put this into, I would say, into context, right? Uh, this is actually a typical silo, right? Because I have I have supply and market. There's a linear kind of stovepipe, um, and even if I have multiple product lines, I basically have um, stovepipes or silos alongside each other, and um, this typically typically I have to say um, ends up in linear growth. And when I say linear, it just means that um, this linear growth can be a very, very flat thing, right? So if I look into telecommunications, or, for example, then this kind of um, growth rate is 1%, 2%, so something that is really, really not exciting for any shareholder or so. Yeah? So this is actually where, where, where traditional business is coming from. So, how can we break these silos? I think breaking these silos is something that is very, very important. Um, and the answer to this is platforms, which sounds the most boring word, uh, word on the world, but um, this is actually um, what it is. Yeah? So what, I, what I'm actually doing is I still have suppliers and I have my consumers or my market that I'm addressing, um, but I'm not, I, don't, I don't have these, these silos any, any longer. So actually what can happen is that um, the, the supplier on the, on the left-hand side who is um, um, producing and providing a service or a product into the market can now say, oh, there's another supplier, and I, I, I add the product or the service of the other supplier to my um, product to make it even more desirable for customers. Yeah? And I bundle them together, I aggregate these products and bring them to market. Um, so there is some kind of end-to-end -end relationship between markets and suppliers. Um, and this end-to-end -end relationship is controlled by the, the platform owner. And these, there are very, very successful platform owners, actually. One of them is, for example, Amazon or Uber. We heard a lot of Uber. Um, so we have all the cab drivers that are supplying their services. And we have the, um, the people that um, um, want to get a ride. Um, on, the, on, the, on, the, on the market end of the, of, of, of the platform. And then Uber said, well, people don't want to get just from A to B. Actually, food that is ordered by people also need to get from A to B. So what, what if I take my Uber driver and a food supplier? Okay, I, I'm Uber, I don't, I don't supply food. So I need a partner, actually. Um, to onboard onto my platform that is providing the food, and I take my service, which is bringing people or, or, or things from A to B, um, I'm driving to the, to, the, to the guy who's providing the food, and then um, I'm driving the food to the guy who's actually eating it. Right? This, is, this is the essential model of, of, um, of Uber Eats. Yeah? So this is, this is basically how this platform works, and obviously this can... Um, this can uh, provide an exponential growth. So where, the question now is, where is this exponential growth coming from? Um, and there are many, many studies, studies out uh, which looks into, into the, the model of Amazon because Amazon is, 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 is very, very um, successful with this model. And there is, um, there's, 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 there's actually one single contact, um, concept um, in Amazon um, that, is, um, that, that provides this or enables this um, exponential growth. And this, um, this concept is, um, is, is basically invented by a guy called um, um, Jeff, Jeff Connell, I think is his name. Um, and this is called the Amazon flywheel. And this Amazon flywheel is actually um, something that looks into 
um, into sellers and into, into how big the selection is for my customers. And it basically says something very, very simple, which is um, I, have a, I have an existing business, and Amazon started, obviously, with, with selling books. Yeah? And selling books for it on its own is surely is nothing that is, um, has an exponential growth rate. Yeah? Um, so I have these um, this existing customers. So how do I drive growth? And the answer is by increasing the selection for my customers. So I need additional sellers on my platform. And the more sellers I have, the bigger the selection is, which then uh, improves the customer experience because a big selection um, is, um, is, is experienced by users as a good experience because I only need to go to one place to buy all the things I need. Yeah? which then um, drives traffic, so I have more traffic on my platform because users really like this platform and they get everything they need, which then attracts sellers um, to get onboarded on the, onto the platform, which increases the, um, the, the selection, which increases the, um, the user experience, and I can go on and go on and go on, and this wheel is spinning faster and faster and faster and faster, which actually then... Um, results in a second um, effect, which is basically a second kind of circle in this um, Amazon flywheel, which is the higher my, 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 my traffic is, the lower the costs are to, to provide the platform and everything, right? And with, with, uh, with, with, um, with decreasing costs, I can also lower my prices. And these prices, again, um, contribute to a better user experience. So this actually then kind of turbocharges and this um, uh, Amazon flywheel is actually a, something that is um, um, growth on steroids, I would say. Yeah. And this is quite exciting. This, 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 this really works. And this doesn't not, this, this not just work for Amazon and the, the big ones. This also works um, in smaller scale. So um, we had a project with, I think, Alex, the second biggest construction company in, in the UK. I'm from Germany. I don't know the... So it's the second one, right? Um, and, I mean, the construction industry, I think, is not known for, I would say, exciting exponential growth on its own, right? So the, the question was, um, okay, um, we, have a big, um, we, we, we have a big buying power, actually, so we can achieve some, um, low prices. Um, and we have a lot of um, partners and subcontractors and customers. So what if we take our buying power, put it into a platform, um, so our um, customers, our subcontractors and so on can buy from this platform? And this is what we did. So we built an MVP for them. Um, they exposed it. And it was, it was, it was really, really something that... Um, was, they had a very, very high level of, of uncertainty because nobody really knew whether the, the, the builder is, would really bother to go on the website to buy, to buy this stuff or he's going to, um, what is it, Wickers and what, what all these kind of um, stores are called. Yeah? And, the un, and, and the interesting thing is they actually did use the service. So the question then was, and when we, we, built, this, um, we built this MVP, um, and obviously... We, we started very small, as we learned in, in, in the morning. We, did, we do small steps. Yeah? Um, so how can we get more traffic onto the platform? And the, uh, the interesting thing is the answer was the more suppliers we put on the platform, the more traffic we have. So it's actually the number of sellers and the and 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 and, and the, um, the the uh, the 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 the, um, the size of selection that actually drives the traffic, um, and which is 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 kind of a a um, an evidence for this flywheel is actually working. It's even working on a smaller scale, yeah. And it, um, the, 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 the other interesting thing is, is actually there's a lot of data, for example, um, that, uh, that um, can be collected from this platform. And this, this, this data can then be um, used for customer insights and for, for even more improve the, um, the, the customer experience, to create more traffic, to attract more sellers, 
and to get this flywheel going and going and going and going. And um, again, we started with something that we put live after four weeks of, uh, of, the, of, of, of development with something very small and then we evolved the whole solution from there. Yeah. So, and, and this is, I mean, there's Alibaba, there's Uber, there's, there, there, there are a lot of, um, um, of uh, um, examples um, which, which are, are working very, very well. And I think Amazon is really, really interesting. Because another thing that Amazon actually did was um, they, they, they compon componentized the business capabilities that they need to provide all these kind of things, and you, you can buy it from them. Yeah? You can buy their logistics process, you can buy their selling portal, you can buy um, infrastructure from them on, on AWS. Everything that they needed to build their business, they opened up for anyone else to use. And this can be competitors, doesn't, doesn't matter. It's, a, it's, a, it's an, a vibrant um, um, platform and, and, and a vibrant um, ecosystem, and it works even together with, 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 with competitors. I think this is also a very, very important uh, message. Yeah? So this is a quite interesting thing. So it brings us to the next thing, which is, or the next question. So what is the role of the platform owner? Because we learned the platform owner is quite, uh, quite important in this play. Yeah? And the first thing is the platform owner is providing a business environment, and he needs to provide control and governance. So Amazon needs to make sure that the, 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 the sellers um, are interacting with the buyers in a controlled way, and they do it in a very, very rigid way. So if you are an Amazon um, um, seller, um, you need to comply to certain standards, and if you don't, you will be removed very, very quickly from the platform. Yeah. But you need also a process to onboard uh, um, suppliers because we learned suppliers are very important. And the more supplier you have, the faster your, the, your flywheel is actually spinning. Yeah. So you need an, an automated way of onboarding new suppliers. This is a very, very important learning from, uh, from the platform play. Onboarding is, uh, is absolutely crucial. And then you need um, pricing and billing, because if you aren't able to, uh, to, to, pr to do pricing and more, mass and more importantly, um, billing for the products on your, on your platform, then it's tough, right? I mean, I'm, I'm, I'm coming from a strong telecommunications background, and we had one, one saying in telecommunications, which is, if you can't bill it, kill it. Yeah? Because it's no point in, in, in building a product if you can't bill for it, because either you don't have the billing capabilities or nobody is using it. Right? And then the next one is um, um, security, and, uh, security and identity management. So the platform owner uh, needs to provide these capabilities. That doesn't necessarily mean he can't um, procure it from or, or, or use it from some, somebody else, but he is responsible for... Um, for, for providing the, the, uh, the security and identity management capabilities um, to the platform participants. Yeah? Um, then, there's a, then, then there is a, a, a certain aspect of uh, business process management, which is actually more event handling management, to be honest. Yeah? And then we have data management and analytics. And this is really, really important. And this is a very, very uh, um, um, strong um, argument actually for platforms because it's, 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 it's heaven when it comes to, to, to data. Yeah? Because the more suppliers, the more customers you have, the, the more data do you have. And this is then, this, this fuels then your ability to apply um, artificial intelligence. Because one of the big problems of artificial intelligence nowadays, yeah, this is very, very different to the, to, to, artificial intelligence in, in the early days, in the 50s, yeah, where artificial intelligence basically was rule-based, and you had to improve your, your rule set to, to, to make more or better or smarter decisions. Yeah. Today we are using machine learning, and machine learning is nothing else than you are optimizing your algorithms with training data. Yeah. And every time someone comes to me and says, oh, I have a great idea of, do, do, can we do, can, can't we apply an, um, um, artificial intelligence for, to do X, Y, Z? Then the question is, uh, yeah, maybe we can. Do we have any idea where we get the training data from? Um, and this is a very, very important question. So if you are a platform owner, um, you have a lot of data. 
So very, very important to, um, uh, to, to, to fuel your um, um, artificial intelligence machines. And then last but not least, um, I mean, this is, um, this is, this is almost obvious. Um, the platform owner needs to operate the platform um, or is at least um, responsible for operating the platform. And again, this can be on one of the infrastructure um, providers like Amazon or like or Google or something like this. Yeah? But the platform itself needs to operate by you and this is, it can run on these kind of cloud infrastructure. So this is, this, this is very, very important. So if you, go, if you want to, um, want to in, enter into the platform play, um, this is, this is ba these are basically the uh, responsibilities you, you will have to look after. Very important. So um, we talk, we, at, the, at the beginning, I was talking about evolution. So um, of course, there are downsides. Yeah? Um, so one of the downsides of the platform model is actually the platform owner takes it all, right? I said in the beginning, a platform usually has a gross expectation, which is exp exp exponentially. Unfortunately, um, this only applies for the um, platform owner, right? So the Uber driver itself um, doesn't have exponential growth, right? Um, he has a linear growth, which is basically as much he is, dri he is driving, the more money he has, right? And the the day has um, 24 hours, even for an Uber driver. Yeah? So there's, um, there, there, are, there are limitations um, for, the, for, the, for the suppliers. Yeah? Um, and then the second one is because we, um, we heard like, um, what was it called? Uh, the the, the taxi, taxi one? I have to admit I haven't heard about it as well. Taxi magic. Taxi magic. Yeah? So if your platform, if you are a supplier on a platform and your platform owner or the business of your platform owner fails, your, your, your business will fail as well, right? So it's a very, very important thing to understand that the platform owner um, is, um, is, the res is responsible for the, um, for the success of the platform. Yeah? And then last, and then we have the we, we, one about trusted or, or trust and to be a trusted authority. And this is, I think, something that Uber didn't make well all the time, I would say. There's some room for, still some room for improvement, right? So for a successful platform play, you have to be the trusted authority on the, to run the platform. And I do think, for example, Amazon does this exceptionally well. Yeah? Um, and the platform owner owns all the data, yeah, which is good for the platform owner, which is less good for the platform participants. Yeah? So um, as a result of this, if you are the platform owner, great. Yeah? It's a very comfortable place to be. Um, but if you're not the platform owner, um, then this, it's kind of tough luck. So the question is, what comes next? Yeah? And I, I talked about democratization at the, at, at the beginning, was, which was one of the 10 um, predictive hot topics for the next year. And you can take it actually one step further and say, OK, what is a truly, a, a, a truly democratic ecosystem? Yeah? Which is um, what we call value fabric. Yeah? So you don't have these two-sided business, this platform is often referred to as a two-sided business model because on the one side you have the suppliers and on the other side you have the customers. Yeah? In the value fabric, it's a, it's, a bit, it's a bit different because you actually have uh, participants that are dealing with each, each other and making uh, business with each, each other. Yeah? So they are supplying services to each other that then can be aggregated uh, to, to, be, um, to be offered to the, to the end customer, or I can aggregate my service into others, and I can, I can do a mix of both, right? Um, so um, this, is, this is basically the, the platform play as a three kind of 3D game, yeah? um, which then actually um, provides exponential growth for the whole ecosystem. Yeah? Um, so in this, in this model, um, all participants actually are autonomous, and they can aggregate um, services of others into their own services, and they can be, in, uh, they can be aggregated. Yeah? And the success doesn't depend on the platform owner himself. Then there need to be someone who is actually providing the environment, and I will come to, to who could this be in a minute, right? Um, but actually, 
every, every participant is, uh, is, is responsible, responsible for its own success. Yeah? And then fabrics are, are curated. They are, not, they are not managed or there's no real control or governance. Um, it's basically curating an environment of, uh, um, um, of an ecosystem. Yeah? So the question now is actually, who could actually have a, has an interest in running this kind of business uh, and who could it be? Um, because obviously this is very, very attractive for the participants. Yeah? Um, so today, actually, most of the examples are taken from uh, or are, are, are in the domain of smart cities, for example. So most of the smart city projects are actually heading to this direction. So I was involved and in, we were involved um, in a um, in a um, uh, one of the biggest actually um, smart city projects in the UK, which is Milton Keynes, um, and they actually created a such an ecosystem. Um, to onboard um, startups, to involve academia, so they work together with Open, open University, um, they, they work together with media company, they worked with the local businesses in Milton Keynes, and they created this vibrant um, marketplace or this vibrant ecosystem as a communal authority. Um, so they, they wanted to make Milton Keynes more, more attractive for businesses, for academia, um, and for the citizens, which makes perfectly sense. And I was involved in another uh, one, which was, a, that was actually a nice project on the, on the Côte d'Azur, which is uh, basically in Nice. Yeah? They, 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 they did the same, right? Looking into um, how can I create an ecosystem for, to attract business um, and to keep high value citizens um, in, my, in, my, in, 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 in my community. Yeah? So they have a vast interest of running this kind of ecosystem. Yeah. And I, I think in terms of um, com communal authorities and, and so on, um, this is actually a, a very, very attractive model for them. And this is, um, so this is, I'm not Gartner, but I would say my prediction is this will become very, very relevant in the next five years. Yeah. So what are the enablers of these fabrics? Um, oh. Oh. Um, can I, the improvement for next year would be to make this work. Um, <laughs> um, so the enabler for this, I mean, obviously is AI, yeah, and AI security, which is um, which goes hand in hand, yeah, um, because the, 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 for the to, to reach the the degree of um, automation you need, you need to make AI decisions. Yeah? Then you have blockchain because again, fabrics are um, a. a, a uh, yeah, a network of autonomous um, parties, um, and you need a distributed concept of trust, which typically um, can be uh, can be achieved with um, a distributed ledger technology. And blockchain is one of the uh, distributed ledger technologies that um, are, are commonly used for this. Yeah. And then again, we have these event hubs and APIs, yeah? because all the, all the participants need to talk to each other, or their systems need to talk to each other. So I mean, I, I, David has a, had, a, had a slide which was, I, I found very interesting, which basically said that in um, 2025, 95% um, of all interaction with customers will be based on AI or will be automated. Yeah? I would go a step further. Um, which is, it's not just interaction with your customers, it's also um, interaction with the other participants in this kind of ecosystem. Yeah? And this can, this can only be achieved if you have a concept of event and event handling and, um, and AIs. And again, cloud native infrastructure is absolutely, is absolutely vital to um, achieve the required level of um, flexibility um, scalability and elastic elasticity. Yeah. So, so, so again, this is this is my prediction. This will come and then will 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 become more uh, relevant um, in, in the next five years because I have to admit that most of the smart city um, um, projects are um, in a very early stage. I would say, particularly with, when it comes to uh, commercial um, maturity. Um, so. What is actually next, and the next thing, the next kit on the block is actually then autonomous business. Yeah? So you have all these participants 
um, in, your, in, your, in your value fabric. Um, and if you take, if you, if you really bring um, hyper-automation to the next level, you have autonomous business, which actually works in the same way like self-driving cars. It's basically self-driving business. Yeah? So what you, and what you need to do for this is actually, um, you need to create small business units with, ha with, 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 with a limited business scope. Yeah? Because then you can apply um, AI technology to make your business decisions. And then you can basically run a business unit without any uh, human intervention. Yeah? Um, so things like quoting, returns, compensation, so the customer is complaining, uh, how, do I, how can I compensate him, do I accept the return, is it a customer where, where I should return, um, uh, uh, um, where I should accept the return, how can I retain customers, what, I, what is my next best offer I need to provide to the customer to retain him, and so on. This, is, this can all be automated. You don't, you don't need any human interaction. And, on, in these kind of platforms, you have so, ma so much data, you can train your, 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 um, your um, algorithms in a way that the decisions will be much better than any uh, human uh, um, decision in, in, in this context. Yeah? So um, autonomous business is really, really real. So this, this, this will happen. Yeah? Um, so you can so running your, your business with your, without human inter intervention uh, 24 hours, seven days a week, yeah. Um, and again, transactions in this kind of ecosystem will be managed by distributed ledger technologies, um, for example, blockchain. Yeah. So, um, again, this plat the platform economy is still evolving. It will not end with um, Amazon and the Amazon flywheel, although it works very well. Yeah. Um, because, as I said in the morning, um, digital is not an end state. Digital is a journey, and it's, it's a never-ending journey. It's a never-ending journey of responding to change and responding to new insights, new technologies, new ways of thinking. Yeah? Um, so um, it's still evolving, but um, you need to prepare today to actually get on board on, 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 of this, um, this kind of development yeah? and to be able to play an active um, part in this in, in this game, yeah. And again, it is. I mean, this is almost the same last slide um, as in the, in the morning session. Yeah. Um, you need culture. You need and, and and you need to look into technology. And the technology bit again is is simple, right? Most of the technology are already there. Yeah. It's really about culture. Yeah. And it's a really this entrepreneurial um, thing, which is basically. Um, finding the right people inside your organization and give them the empowerment to run a business is very, very vital for this. Yeah? And don't reinvent the wheel. If, if, if something is already there, I mean, Uber, uh, when they thought about Uber Eats, they didn't um, go to Amazon to buy a cookbook. Yeah? Uh, <laughs> and so they, they basically looked out for people that can provide food. Yeah? Um, and you can, you, it, and it's, 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 it's for most of the enabling uh, 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 business capability, there's already something out there. Yeah, you can already, al almost pick and choose from what is already there. Yeah? But you need to decouple your own products as well, which Amazon did in a very, very great way. Yeah? And they didn't, they, they managed to decouple it by not creating silos, which is, which is very, very important. Yeah? And then again, um, it's about digital experience. It's not just about business processes. And it's not just about customer experience, it's about digital experience to all the other participants in your ecosystem you have to interact with. Yeah? So that's basically what it is from my side. Um, if you have any questions, um, I will. Exactly. Yep. And um, sorry for overrunning again. No, no, it's fine. <laughs> Thank you very much.